Hey there everyone, and welcome back to another video. Most people who watch my channel have likely travelled on a heritage railway before. Now, let's think of some that spring to mind. Well, you've got the Spa Valley Railway from Eridge to Tunbridge Wells West, you've got the Epping Ongar Railway from Epping to Ongar, and the Ricelip Lido Railway on the outskirts of London in Ricelip Lido. Many would associate heritage railways with the countryside, although they weren't always planned to be in the countryside. Well, by that I mean, well, that's for you all to find out about in this video. In this video I will be discussing what were meant to be two heritage railways dotted across London, and I will be explaining the histories behind the railways, the current state of the railways, and why they never ended up materialising as heritage railways. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video, as it massively helps me out you do. Now, let's explore these two railways then, shall we? Heritage railways are often formally run commercial railways but were shut to passengers and revived by volunteers or non-profit organisations. In the UK, more and more heritage railways were opened following the reshaping of British railways. A report by Beeching which earmarks the closure of 2,363 stations and 5,000 miles of track. Typically, heritage railways will use older rolling stocks such as steam locomotives in order to recreate the historical experience of travelling on one of these heritage railways, to recreate what passenger service might have been like whilst the railway was still commercial. Some heritage railways don't intend on using older rolling stock per se. Heck, some using types of rolling stock have never even been anywhere near the railway, in the case of one of these railways. Compared to other parts of the country, London fared better when it came to the closure of the railways by Dr Beeching, so these suggestions for conversion weren't due to a potential closure as part of the reshaping of British railways, and instead were looked at in the following years. So let's move on to the first of the two railways then, shall we? The first railway that was meant to be converted into use as a heritage railway was the Grove Park to Bromley North Line, known by many as the Popper. I've made a video on the line previously on this channel, where I have discussed plans surrounding its future, so if you want to watch it there's a link up in the corner. It's had a lot of what-ifs during its lifetime, one of which was a potential conversion to a heritage railway. So let's run through the line's history first then, shall we? The Bromley North Line first opened back in 1878 by the Bromley Direct Railway Company between Grove Park and Bromley, which is present-day Bromley North, with a station opens between the two stations at Playstow. Initially built to compete with the London Chatham and Dover Railway, the line opened as a double track railway where there was clearly some thought into how the line could potentially become popular and allow the capacity to be ma maximised if that were to be the case. Playstow was eventually renamed to Sundridge Park in July of 1894, and other than a few station rebuildings in the years following, not much has changed when it's come to the infrastructure of the railway. The service until 1976 had direct services from Bromley North and Sundridge Park into Hoban Viaduct, Victoria, London Bridge, London Cannon Street and London Charing Cross. This is presumably why Bromley North exists as a railhead, where most bus services within Bromley either serve or terminate there. When services did reach central London from the Bromley North Line, some ran as individual services, while some detached from long-distance mainline services, such as Hastings-bound services at Grove Park. Nowadays there'd be no point in doing so, as it would slow down longer-distance southeastern services towards the coast and Medway towns, and there'd be no point detaching a unit from a stop of southeastern service at Grove Park, when you're just able to walk over to the other platform and catch it from there. Electrification took place into Cannon Street and Charing Cross in the mid-1920s, and so soon enough the line to Bromley North was electrified. Whilst the service proved popular until 1976, it was always low-hanging fruit if paths into central London ever had to be meddled with, due to how short the branch was, and how for those wanting Bromley, there were fast services out of London Victoria to Bromley South Station, just down the road from Bromley North. In 1976, Operation London Bridge came into effect, which meant that there would be great difficulty factoring in the Bromley North services when it came to re-signalling. Bromley North services would have to remain on the fast lines from Grove Park onwards, meaning no calls could be made at Lewisham St John's or New Cross, and instead could only call at Hither Green heading into London Bridge. It would be a waste calling the service at Hither Green though as it would only hinder faster services trailing behind the Bromley northbound services, and the services were unable to cross the flat junctions onto the slow lines to avoid this occurring as part of the re-signalling scheme. 
A decision was then made for off-peak Bromley North services to instead terminate at Grove Park, and for the Bromley North line to operate as a self-contained branch. There were fears over how such a decision could impact the usage of the branch, especially when you consider that the at the time 94 and 126 were frequent bus services, that might make a rail passenger reconsider whether or not it would be worth waiting for a more infrequent service that would take you to the exact same place the alternative bus services would. Eventually in 1990, the peak hour services into central London from Bromley North were cut, and the service pattern other than a test journey on an at the time new class 376 in 2004, and occasionally for engineering works, was culled to Grove Park. It was a suggestion in 1987 that brought about the idea of the Bromley North to Grove Park line being partially converted into a heritage railway. I say partially because remember how I mentioned that the line is double track because it was thought that demand would be high? Well, even though the railway sees a reasonable level of patronage by branch line standards, back in 1987 there was a suggestion for the line to be effectively singled, where the Grove Parks of Bromley North line would be able to use one track, and an old preserved London Underground Rolling Stock unit could use the other, with a fourth rail added to make the track compatible electrification-wise. It was a genius idea at the time. The line would generate revenue from leisure passengers whose exclusive purpose was to sample a heritage railway rather than someone exclusively relying on the branch to reach their final destinations. The preserved London underground rolling stock could also be used for filming purposes, similar to what the old Piccadilly line platforms at Aldwych and Jubilee line platforms at Charing Cross can be used for. Having a location for filming would be ideal as it would mean extra revenue generated during a time where cost cutting was very much on the agenda, and the line now operating as a shuttle meant passenger numbers weren't as great as they once were when services reached central London. A caveat of the plan was that another platform would need to be provided for for the heritage service at Grove Park. It wasn't such an issue at Bromley North due to there being the two platforms rather than the single one at the Grove Park end. The line wasn't amended or degraded to single track operation, instead remaining as a double track line operating a frequent half hourly service with class 465s at the present day. Now, on to the next line we go. The second railway there were looks at converting into a heritage railway was the Custom House to North Woolwich portion of the Stratford to North Woolwich line. The Eastern Counties and Junction Railway were the company responsible for the construction of this section of the North London line, where the line from Stratford to Bow Creek opened in April 1846, and a year later was extended down to North Woolwich to allow connections to the North Woolwich Ferry. When the Royal Victoria Dock opened in 1855, a swing bridge was necessary to ensure the railway was able to pass over the dock. This led to an increase in journey times, however, so the railway was diverted through Tidal Basin and Custom House, and the Silvertown segment that was then ridden of had found use by local factories and industry, although it later became part of the Docklands Light Railway towards Beckton. Silvertown Station opened in 1863 between Custom House and North Woolwich, down the road from present-day London City Airport. In 1979, the Stratford to North Woolwich line, which by that point after seeing services M towards Tottenham Hale and Palace Gates, was extended to Camden Road via Hackney as part of the Crosstown Link Line using diesel multiple units. The Crosstown Link Line saw operation until May 1985 when the line from Dalston to Stratford was electrified with overhead wires, and Stratford to North Woolwich was electrified with third rail electrification. This allowed Richmond to North Woolwich services to operate via Stratford, Camden Road and Wilston Junction. The Stratford to North Woolwich portion of the North London line was double track, but in 1980 the Custom House to North Woolwich stretch was single tracked, with the other track left to be consumed by vegetation. The line from Stratford to North Woolwich closed from May 1994 to October 1995 to allow for the construction of the Jubilee line extension from Canning Town to Stratford, which the Stratford stretch of Silverlink paralleled. The line saw fewer and fewer people using it between Stratford and Canning Town once the Jubilee line extension opened to Stratford in 1999, and despite all the modernisation efforts, the Docklands Light Railway extension to King George V at the end of 2005 was the final nail in the coffin. I mean, how could Silverlink compete with a far more frequent DLR service from London City Airport very close by to Silvertown, and King George V only a few minutes walk away from North Woolwich? The Stratford to North Woolwich line closed in December of 2006 to allow for conversion of Stratford to Canning Town into a Docklands Light Railway branch, with the Canning Town to North Woolwich section of the line left to lay in limbo.
Remember how I told you that North Woolwich to Custom House was single tracked just before the line saw electrification in the 1980s? By single tracking the line, you inevitably end up with a disused terminating platform at North Woolwich, which along with this old station building at North Woolwich was used to house the North Woolwich Old Station Museum, which was based inside the old ticket office at North Woolwich until it closed in 1979 and a newer one was used instead. The museum's collections included historical materials on railways in East London, model trains, and a non-operational steam locomotive, and so it would seem logical that now the Custom House to North Woolwich Railway was non-operational and was lying in limbo, that maybe a company could get their hands both on the museum and the railway. While the Royal Docks Heritage Railway proposed the operation of heritage trains along the now-closed section of North Woolwich to Custom House, with stations at Custom House, Silvertown, and North Woolwich on the existing station sites, with halts added at Connaught and Albert Road. There were plans to double the line once again, using the track that had been consumed by vegetation for about 25 years by that point. So the plan was foolproof, right? Well, in the end, the museum closed in November of 2008, due to the London Borough of Newham no longer being able to finance the museum, with items instead dispersed to the East Anglian Railway Museum, Mangat's Railway Museum, and the Great Eastern Railway Society, with some retained by Newham Heritage Service, also heir to the collections of the Passmore Edwards Museum. It's a shame, really, but there was a larger infrastructure project that killed any possibility of the railway ever being used as a heritage railway, which is the construction of the Elizabeth Line. When it comes to reviving old pieces of railway infrastructure in cities, decisions should be made within the interests of those needing to move around for necessity, rather than those who may enjoy a railway trip for leisure purposes. The construction of the Elizabeth Line has ensured the creation of 200,000 new office jobs, the opening of 171 hotels, 2,666 new food and beverage outlets, and 12 museums. 51% of central London office take-up in 2023 has been within a 10-minute walk of Elizabeth Line stations, and so this really emphasises how revolutionary the Elizabeth Line has been since its opening. The North Woolwich to Stratford Line may not have been the most popular of railways when it existed in its old format under National Rail, but chunks of the line have been repurposed for other railway infrastructure projects which have completely revived them, which is how I think we should be looking at reviving railway infrastructure. What might have worked when the line was open 60 or 70 years ago might not work nowadays due to changing travel habits. I mean, could you imagine if the North Woolwich Line had been converted into a heritage railway, or even if it remained in its old form? I am aware that the plans were only temporary until the construction of the Elizabeth Line commenced, but it's in this video we're looking at the bigger picture. If we had taken the North Woolwich to Custom House Line and it had been converted into a heritage rail permanently, then the Docklands and South East London would be worse off now. The countryside where demand is a lot lower and where a railway service may not have been so justified on an abandoned section of railway infrastructure would make far more sense, I feel. Having said that, in the interim between the end of passenger services to and from North Woolwich and the construction of Crossrail, do I think it would have been a nice idea? Potentially. Would either of these railways have functioned nowadays as heritage railways? Well, not really. I've established why Custom House to North Woolwich being converted wouldn't have been a good idea, what with the growth of the Docklands and the improved transport connections within South and East London that came as part of the Elizabeth Line. But what about the Bromley North to Grove Park line? Well, I think it's a bit of a 50-50 on this one. I think the idea to take one of the tracks and devote it to a heritage railway company in theory wouldn't be the worst idea, as the branch at present only uses 1465, so at the branch's current frequency it could sustain the same level of service with no real difficulty. Where it might start to become problematic is if there was a look into changing the nature of the branch. For example, the proposals I discussed in my previous Grove Park to Bromley North video, which details how there have been looks into extending the Bakerloo line from Beckenham Junction, the Docklands Light Railway from Lewisham, the London Overground from New Cross, and the trams from Beckenham Junction. Well, what would you do from there? If the Heritage Railway garnered sentimental value after opening, that would make it difficult to repossess from the Heritage Railway, as there could be large public outcry against the Heritage Railway now disappearing. It's similar to what some are predicting about the Camden Highline project, if BML2 were to go ahead with the Spa Valley Railway, and especially prevalent if we're discussing Custom House to North Woolwich. 
Even if the Grove Parks of Bromley North Line needed to ever see a capacity increase due to demand shooting up, a partial conversion would make that more difficult. One of the lessons we have as a country learnt since the Beeching Axe dropped was how forethought was needed when it came to these railways closing, and how even if a line was to be mothballed due to a lack of demand, could there be any protections that could have been put into place to prevent the lines from being swallowed up by motorways, housing, or industrialisation, which is why it's been made increasingly difficult to reopen lines that might actually be quite useful if reopened nowadays. Therefore, maybe that composes an argument for why partially converting the Bromley North Line to Heritage Railway operation would be a bad idea. So do I think any other railways in London could be converted to operate as a Heritage Railway? I'm not too sure honestly. Given the pressing traffic issues this city faces, any railways that are likely to reopen will probably be to passenger service. Such examples of this include Brentford to Southall, which I know sees some freight services, albeit a very small number to and from the aggregates terminal near the A4. I don't think there's a whole lot of scope for Heritage Railways in London, because to be honest, the enjoyment of being at a Heritage Railway is being in the countryside. It's a lot more synonymous with the countryside, and I don't quite know how any urban Heritage Railways would hold up against a Heritage Railway going through the countryside. Don't get me wrong, it would be cool, but is it practical in a city and is it as enjoyable? I'm honestly not too sure. Anyway, that's it from me for this video. If you liked this video, please make sure to like, subscribe and share this video, as it massively helps me out when you do. What do you think of the possibility of Heritage Railways in London? Have there been any other conversion to Heritage Railway proposals that you know of? There might be one or two I've missed out on, I'm honestly not too sure. If I have, then I'll make a follow-up video. I couldn't really find any others to speak about. Would you like to see any other Heritage Railways in London converted? Leave them down in the comments section below. I love reading and answering your comments. Anyway, that's it from me folks. Take care everyone, and see you in the next video.